Okay, cool. Thanks, Steve. Uh, so my name is Luca, and I'm a third-year PhD student with the Filtor Group uh, in Oxford. And uh, the main focus of my PhD is to learning a representation of objects uh, in video. And the uh, main purpose of that is to track them. So what's, what we are trying to do, what's the problem we are trying to solve? Uh, so let's imagine that the user provides us with a, a video we have never seen before and tell us, OK, this is the object I'm interested in. And it will outline this object with, just with a simple rectangular bounding box just at the very first frame. It might be interesting in following uh, the ball in a match, a fish, a, a motorcycle, we don't really know. And to come back to what Steve was saying, uh, and that's why we're starting a collaboration with him. This is very useful for, uh, for his smart glasses because the user might want to interact with a mug, for example, or we want to interact with a, with a person in front of him, and he just wants to say, okay, that's what I'm interested about. So we can use uh, other uh, computer vision machine learning techniques on top of that to just really focus on that and uh, sort of blur out the, the background. Uh, the biggest challenge of, the, of this task in general is that we need to be task um, class agnostic. Why? Because we don't know what the user is going to be interested in at test time. So differently from other uh, more popular computer vision tasks like image classification, we don't know that our class is uh, you know, among the thousand class of ImageNet. It's something completely new. So we need to be agnostic to that. Uh, so what people did in the, in the past so uh, they mostly use the so-called tracking uh, by detection uh, paradigm, where uh, the supervision, as I was talking about, is used to alert on on, uh, exclusively online a binary classifier to discriminate between what is the object and what is the background, OK? So this binary classifier is then um, used to detect and redetect the object at each and every frame, and the new evidence is incorporated into the classifier to uh, refine it. The problem is that it's also going to drift because we also inclu include the prediction error. Okay? But the biggest problem of this approach is that it cannot leverage any type of prior performance. So if we want to track a ball, uh, that's the only frame, the, the only appearance of a ball that the algorithm has ever seen. And that's quite poor. So for example, if we want to track a person, so we, we are not going to have much, uh, much more information. Uh, okay, so we started from a, a very simple approach to do similarity learning. And uh, basically, here is a vanilla uh, Siamese comnet where we, uh, we basically want to learn a representation uh, to compare, uh, uh, learning a representation to, to compare two uh, input, OK? And they, they are from the same size. So if the score is high, it means that these two objects are, are similar. Otherwise, they are not. The, the problem of this approach is that we need to do that for every pair, so green against all the, all the red, all the negative pairs, and they, this takes a huge amount of time. So what we did is uh, and, and we expanded on the concept of a, a vanilla Siamese network, and we used a fully convolutional Siamese network. Okay? So where the idea is that we can have two uh, inputs of uh, two different sizes. Z is the, the target, X is the search uh, area, and we can uh, cross-correlate the, the, the two representations so that every sub-window inside the search area will have a direct uh, representation in uh, uh, a direct correspondence in the, in the final um, uh, re response. And so the maximizer of this response will indicate the new position of, of the target. And this is for the tracking. Uh, and we don't need to do any SGD, any stochastic gradient descent online. We don't do, need to do fine tuning. So it's extremely fast and it runs uh, at about 100 frames per second. Uh, so this happens during uh, testing, so during the actual training, assuming that the gamma, which is the network, has been already trained. So during training, we, we do something very simple. Uh, we just take a quite big data, uh, video data set of 5,000 videos called ImageNet Video. And we just uh, match uh, pairs at random location uh, from random videos. So basically, sometimes this is going to be very close, sometimes it's going to be very far. And this allows us to tackle many different type of, uh, of appearance change. And uh, this method is pretty simple. Uh, so it can be explained in three slides, basically. But uh, uh, let us uh, achieve very interesting performance. So we uh, obtain a new set of the art for what regards real-time trackers. So uh, this is a leaderboard for the VOT benchmark. And uh, uh, it represents all uh, trackers, so also very slow ones. 
So we are a, a Cyan FC, and uh, you can see that we're very close to the top, which is also uh, a deep learning method. Uh, but uh, since it, it has to uh, refine the network online, it, it runs only at one frame per second. And it, it's worth noting that none among the top 15 methods can perform real time. So this is quite useful because clearly in a video application, we, we definitely want to work in real time. Uh, so, yeah, this is a, a couple of examples. So uh, remember that the supervision has been provided exclusively at uh, the, the first frame of the video with, with this bounding box and, and, and nothing else. And specifically, the, in the videos that I'm, I'm showing here, uh, the, the, the class has never been seen during training. So the, the, it, this still works because the network, rather than focusing on a specific class, learned how to uh, do a matching, okay? So this is one and another one. I think it is actually more challenging because uh, the appearance change is very, very uh, difficult and uh, uh, the, the fish is being partially occluded several times. Okay. And also it doesn't jump on other fishes, fortunately. And yeah, one last example is uh, this. It's not perfect, but still I think it's quite, uh, quite interesting. Yeah, it should fail at some point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. <laughs> so yeah, th that's it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, feel free to contact us for any type of question now or uh, later via email. And also feel free to go to the website with the GitHub logo because the code is freely available, open source, so you can play and yeah, do whatever you want. Thank you very much.